Now, what if I were to tell you on the flip side that every single thing that happened in order for you to be here was planned and designed by a creator who loves? Oh, who loves you like a father? Not like a broken father, like a perfect father. And what you're going through right now has the potential to have eternal ramifications. Oh, and these 80 years or whatever they're going to be are just a blink of an eye. And for eternity, you will be in bliss. Well, then the suffering here all of a sudden is a very, very small thing. In fact, then you can live this life for others. You can pour yourself out as Jesus did, even unto death. You can die for others. You can even die for someone who's killing you, knowing you have eternity to be with God. And that even now your life is valuable, far more valuable than any money you can amass any goal that you can accomplish that's physical, because this universe, this physical universe, will pass away. It will be gone. We all know it. It's all temporal, but you are eternal. You are more valuable than anything you've ever seen, except for other people. And that means everybody you've ever seen is more valuable than anything you've ever possessed. It changes everything. So if you're over here, on the naturalistic side of things. There's no hope, there's no purpose, there's no meaning, except what we construct for ourselves to make ourselves feel better. But if God is real, and if the Christian message is true, it changes everything. Now here's the problem though. We as Christians, if we accept this, tend to gravitate back over here because that's where everyone else is around us. And we start making excuses why that should look like this. Why our Christian life should look boring and lackluster. Why a life led by the Spirit can still be harangued by pornography. Or by self-abasement. So where do we stand then? Where do we stand? Because here's the thing. This world desperately needs Jesus. Desperately needs Jesus. Just Look at the news. Just open your eyes and see what's going on in the world today. Now I tell you, if Jesus were here, people would be flocking to him. People would be coming to, and healings would happen and life would be restored and the world would be changed. Revival would break out. But guess what? He intends us to be him. We are to be his hands and his feet. We are to be made into his image. We are to be transformed into his likeness. That's the thing. He intended to multiply himself. He started with 12. And right now there's over a billion people in the world who call themselves Christian. But it's like we've diluted it and we don't really believe it anymore.